Hi again. In this survey of engineering video, we're going to be talking about tall structures. So what's in this video? We're in the last video, we talked about ideal trusses, um, simple trusses. Today we're going to talk about real structures. We'll list the types of loads that they have to be able to support and categorize the components of a structure of a tall building. Your portfolio questions for this video are, what are the types of loads a structure must support? And what are the structural components of a building and what is their purpose? So the same compressive and tensile forces are still experienced in the beams of a real structure, but now we have bending forces that also come into play because the joints between the members of the structure are rigid and now are no longer assumed to be hinges. They can't freely rotate. So also, even though these are very small or may be very small, there might be some deformations or changes in shape of the parts of the structure. The types of loads that a structure will experience begin with the load of the structure itself or the weight of the structure itself. This is called a dead load and it's defined as a load that is fixed in location, meaning it doesn't move, and constant in magnitude, meaning the weight does not change. In other words, the dead load doesn't move and the amount of the load doesn't change. A live load is a load that can move location and may change in magnitude or amount. This includes things like people and furniture that might be moving around the building. A third type of load are environmental loads. These are things like wind, earthquake, snow and ice, and settling. Even temperature changes. These temperature changes can cause loads due to thermal expansion of bu building materials. For the purposes of this class, we will put the structural components of a building into the following categories. Foundation, vertical load resisting system, lateral load resisting system, damping, and the curtain wall. Now let's discuss the purpose of each of these. The foundation is there to support the weight of the superstructure or the part of the structure that is above ground. It also anchors the structure to the earth and it helps to resist lateral or sideways forces on the structure. The vertical load resisting system, vertical meaning up and down, is there to transfer the forces of the structure into the foundation. The components of this system include load-bearing walls, columns, and frames. Traditionally, the walls of the building were what supported the structure, and the taller the structure, the thicker the walls had to be. A 16-story building constructed in Chicago in 1891 had walls of six feet thick at the base. That's almost, that's about the height of an average adult male. The need for the thick walls was eliminated when steel frame construction became uh, an option. So in steel frame construction, you see a picture of it here. There are rigid, a rigid steel skeleton that supports the building's weight, and the outer walls are pretty much just hung from the frame, kind of like curtains. A lateral load resisting system. These are intended to resist loads that would move the building from side to side. These are things like wind and earthquakes but could also arise from temperature deformations 
and something called unexpected deformations, which are um, resulting from imprecision or uh, mismeasurement in the manufacture and construction of the parts of the building. Another cause might be the uneven settling of the foundation in a, an inhomo inhomogeneous site, meaning the ground is differing in composition. These systems include rigid frames. That means that the joints in the frames are braced so that it's not going to bend. Shear walls, which are basically solid walls of reinforced concrete. And braced frames. Notice the truss structure here. So it's important uh, how these elements are configured within the building and symmetrical placement of them is necessary to resist lateral loads from all directions. Damping is performed to reduce the oscillations or swaying back and forth that would be caused in the tall structure by wind or earthquake. A tuned mass damper is a device that's mounted in structures and it reduces the amplitude of mechanical vib vibrations, meaning the amplitude meaning how far it sways back and forth. So a tuned mass damper or TMD device usually consists of a mass, a spring or a pendulum, and a damper which dissipates the vibrational energy as heat. There application can prevent discomfort of the people inside the building. It can also prevent the damage or outright structural failure of the building itself due to the vibrations of a building. This first video link listed here shows a simulation of how a mass damper reduces the oscillations of a walkway. If you watch the video, you'll notice how the swinging of the mass on the pendulum reduces the swinging or oscillation of the walkway. The second video link shows a tuned mass damper at work inside the skyscraper called Taipei 101, actually filmed during an er earthquake. In this video, you'll see the steel cables that hold this large almost 800 ton ball and you'll also see below the ball are eight viscous dampers that act like shock absorbers to dissipate that vibrational energy. The curtain wall, the basic purpose of the curtain wall is to form the outside walls of the structure. It only has to support its own weight and often it's made out of almost completely out of glass. In summary, in this video we talked about real and not idealized structures. We outlined the types of loads that the structures have to support and we put into the categories the structural elements of a building. For class, make sure that you have answered the portfolio questions we're going to be talking about a specific example of a very tall structure, the current tallest building in the world, called the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. And we'll be, you will be building your own structure in class. See you next time.